The discovery of restriction enzymes as a tool for DNA manipulation was a major achievement in molecular biology. Restriction enzymes or endonucleases cleave DNA into fragments at or near a specific restriction site. They were first identified by Werner Arbor when he observed the phenomenon of host control variation of bacterial viruses. Arbor proposed that bacterial cells, in this case E. coli, were able to protect themselves against foreign DNA through some sort of enzymatically catalyzed genetic defense mechanism. Later on, Hamilton Smith and Ken Wilson isolated and characterized the first restriction enzyme from Haemophilus influenzae and confirmed Arbor's hypothesis. Today, restriction enzymes are the ultimate tool for DNA cutting and recombinant technologies. They are also used for physical mapping of DNA and are invaluable for genetic engineering manipulations. In this practice, the enzymes ECHO-REPIST-1 and HIN-3 will be used to digest DNA, and the results will be analyzed using electrophoresis. The materials for this practice are the following. The restriction enzymes, which are HIN-3, restriction enzyme, PSFT restriction enzyme, ECHO-R1 restriction enzyme, the restriction buffer, 2x, the lambda DNA, which is uncut, the sample Laudin dye, which is 5x, the thidium bromide, the color microtest tubes, agarose 5 grams, electrophoresis buffer, micro pipettes, electrophoresis chamber, power supply, millimeter rule, which will be used for the, the data analysis, and tape, permanent markers, and the thermocycler. At the beginning of the practice, all the reagents provided were put in ice. Next, the five microtubes were labeled as followed. Lambda for the restriction digestion of the lambda DNA with the PST1. P for the restriction digestion of plasmid with PST1. E for the restriction digestion of plasmid with the ECOR1. H for the restriction digestion of the plasmid with HIN3. L for the uncut plasmid DNA. Then, 8 microliters of the restriction buffer were added to the P, E, and H microtubes. Meanwhile, for the lambda tube, 5 microliters of the buffer were added to it. Then, 4 microliters of the PTZ19R were added to the P, E, H, and L microtubes. Meanwhile, for the lambda tube, 4 microliters of lambda DNA were added to it. For the corresponding tubes, 1 microliter of the restriction enzymes was added, PST1 from the P tube, ECOR1 from the E tube, and HIN3 for the H microtube. In order to mix all the reagents, each tube was tightly capped and flicked. Then, in the lambda microtube, 1 microliter of lambda DNA, 5 microliters of the restriction buffer, and 1 microliter of PST1 restriction enzyme were added. The five tubes were placed in a thermocycler arranged in alphabetical order. The thermocycler was set at 37 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. While the samples were incubated, electrophoresis cassette was prepared. The acrylic plate was placed on the cassette and labeled with the help of a labeling bubble. 1% agarose gel with TA buffer one times and ethylene bromide was prepared and set to get solidified. Then, 2.5 microliters of loading dye were added to all the sample's microtubes. The agarose gel was placed in the electrophoresis chamber covered by TAE one times buffer. The five samples were loaded into the agarose gel for the submerged agarose gel electrophoresis. The gel was electrophoresis at 100 volt for 30 minutes. After the samples run in the gel, they were placed in the trans illuminator and pictures were taken to visualize them. We know from Nicole book Introduction to Genetic Engineering, restriction enzymes are one of the most important group of enzymes for genetic manipulation. These enzymes can be found naturally in bacteria cells and play the role of a protective mechanism called the restriction modification system. Restriction enzymes can be categorized in three types depending on their activity. The most commonly used are type 2 
which have the most simple and effective mode of action. They are nucleases and cut in any internal position of the DNA strand. This is why we call them endonucleases. A sequence on one strand of the DNA and its complementary sequence on the other strand can form a palindrome which can be identified by a restriction enzyme. This is called a restriction site. During this practice, the digestion of a particular plasmid was performed. Lodish and collaborators on their book Molecular Cell Biology define plasmid as a circular double-stranded DNA molecule that is separated from the cell's chromosomal DNA. This extra-chromosomal DNA exists in a parasitic and symbiotic relationship with their host cell. Plasmids range in size from a few thousand base pairs to more than 100 kilobases. Two different sequences were used during the practical being the PTC19R plasmid and the lambda phage. The plasmid with 2,862 base pairs in length was submitted into three different digestions, ECOR1, PST1, and HIN3. ECOR1 was isolated from Escherichia coli, which cleaves within the DNA sequence GAATTC, while PST1 was isolated from the gram-negative bacterium named Providencia stuarti that cleaves at the CTGCAG sequence. Finally, HIND3 was isolated from Haemophilus influenzae and cleaves in AAGCTT palindromic sequence within the DNA. The PTC19R has just one restriction site for the PST1, EQR1, and HIN3 enzymes. PST1 and HIN3 restriction sites are located in the multiple cloning site of the plasmid next to the T7 promoter. In the other hand, EQR1 site is in the multiple cloning site but neither to the M13 primer. Because the plasmid was cut one time for each sample, the result for the three cases was a linearized vector. Another DNA sequence used during the practice was the one extracted from the lambda phage. This sample was digested with PST1. The restriction site for this enzyme is present 28 times along the DNA sequence of lambda. During the electrophoresis, a ladder was used and the samples were loaded in the alphabetical order. The walls 3, 4, and 6 correspond to the enzymes EQR1, HIN3, and PST1 with the PTZ19R respectively. The result of the digestion came as, came as expected. The three bands have the same size, meaning that the plasmid was just linearized. The well number 5 had the plasmid undigested and the result for the electrophoresis was the presence of a band. The, ba the band ran a little bit further than the rest of the samples. The following table displays the size of each band in base pairs. According to Patrick and in his work, Topological Behavior of a Plasmid DNA, a supercoiled circular plasmid can travel faster than a loose plasmid or even a linearized one. The most common topology of a plasmid inside the cell is a supercoiled circle to enable it to fit inside the cell. In the laboratory, most of the DNA will remain supercoiled, but a certain amount will sustain a single strand nick. Given the presence of a break in only one of the strands, the DNA will remain circular, but the break will permit rotation around the phosphodiester backbone and the supercoils will be released. Thus, an uncut plasmid produces two bands on a gel, representing the loose plasmid and the supercoiled conformations. If the plasmid is cut once with a restriction enzyme, however, the supercoiled and the open circular conformations are all reduced to a linear conformation. As stipulated before, restriction enzymes are a massive discovery for genetic engineering. Without them, there will be no recombinant technologies which are used to treat diseases, create genetically modified organisms, DNA mapping, among many others. The importance is invaluable.